Well, hello everyone. I have got some stuff to share with you today. I have some makes, I have some new yarn, I have a pattern test that I did and it's an amazing pattern. So, before I get into everything, I have to show you this one clip because I had to get this package out in the mail and it was a custom order. Okay, so real quick, I can show you this. Don't mind me, I am like fresh out of the shower, but I have to get this in the box and out in the mail. So this was my custom order that I was working on. And he took about a day and a half to make. He doesn't look real big on camera, but this little guy is pretty big. So the little girl that wanted this giraffe wanted to be able to sleep with it. So she didn't want the typical style where it's standing on four legs. She wanted it more like a doll. So I went on the hunt for patterns and this was the one I found and she liked it. He was a little harder than it looks. Um, I used Parfait Chunky in yellow and teddy bear. She wanted the traditional giraffe colors. So you had to sew on the ears. You have to sew on the little, I guess you'd call them antlers on a giraffe. And you have to attach all the spots. The tail, the legs, and the arms are crocheted in. And of course you have to sew on the head. But I think he turned out really cute. Would I make this pattern again? Maybe, maybe I would. So, but overall, I think he turned out. So wasn't that giraffe just amazing? It was so cute. I scoured through Etsy and other places looking for just the right giraffe for this little girl, so. So hopefully she loves the little guy as much as I do. So, first thing, I want to talk about is my yarn order. We'll do that first. We'll get that out of the way and then we'll we'll cover the rest of the makes. So someone had contacted me and told me that Hobie had their Honey Bunny on sale. And of course, when I went and looked, they had five colors left, but they did have the green that I like. But I saw an ad come across on Instagram that Hobie has a new yarn called Toucan. So I went to check it out and it was on sale and they had a whole bunch of colors. They had some that were sold out, but they had a whole bunch of colors. So I ended up purchasing the Toucan and I was nervous about doing it, you know, just like we all are when we try something new, especially to order a quantity where I can get the shipping deal because Shipping's expensive. Now, their normal price on these in US dollars is $9.20, and you get 131 yards, and that is not in my budget. I will not pay $9.20 for 131 yards of this yarn, of any yarn, honestly, any yarn. But because they had it on sale, I took advantage, and I purchased two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I purchased 11 colors. Now, on their skeins, they don't give you a color name, so I had to make myself a list. It's just numbers. <laughs> so, I wanna say, of course I had to try out the yarn. So I have something that I made that I'm gonna show you as well. So, the first color I got and I ordered two of each because, well, you know, one's just never not enough. Two probably isn't enough either, but I did two colors of each. And, you know, this is the, the packaging. It says that it is 100% polyester to use a seven millimeter crochet hook or six millimeter knitting needles you get 120 meters or 131 yards. 
which is the same amount that you get in a skein of Parfait Chunky. So this is color number eight, which is peach. So remember, I got two of each. And then this is, of course, all the same info. This is color number 10, and number 10 is coral. This one is color number three, and it is beige. Some of these colors, I thought if you were doing dolls, they would be nice skin tones. Like this, this beige would be a decent skin tone. This one is color number nine, and they simply call it orange. And it looks very close to the tangerine that Parfait Chunky has. But this feels like it has more fluff on the string than some of the Parfait we've been getting lately. So there's that. This one is color number 23, which is a dark turquoise. That is a really pretty color covered in yarn fluff. <laughs> um, it looks way better in person than what I'm seeing on the screen here. So hopefully this color comes across. It is a gorgeous color. This one is color number four and it is sand. Kind of close to the color in the beige, but I think it has a little more brown to it which I would think would also be a decent shade for a skin tone. This one is color number 21. It's a really pretty blue and it is called sky blue. This one is color number six. It is mustard and it is definitely, I'm not gonna let you see this whole critter, definitely a lighter, tone than the Parfait Chunky's mustard. I actually think I like this shade just a little bit better. So that's number, number six and it's mustard. This one is color number five. And number five is a pastel yellow. It's a nice pale yellow but yet it still has color to it. So it's not like super washed out pale. This one is color number 16 and color number 16 is cotton candy. That is a pretty pink. I'm not sure which pink I would compare it to if I was comparing to Parfait Chunky, but that is a pretty shade of pink. And I know, I have a lot of pastel colors here, but you know what was in my mind when I was ordering this? Those octopus from All From Jade. That, I don't know, that was like just in my mind. And my last color is number 28, and they call this one Sage. And oh, here we go again, giving things away. This is Sage in Parfait, in the Glitz. We don't get a regular sage color in regular Parfait Chunky, but that one is more what I think of as a sage color. This is definitely coming across different on the, the screen here, but this I think would be a great color for frogs, maybe even turtles, but it's a nice shade. So I think that was all of them. Okay, so for what I, my impression of the Toucan Yarn is, it does not feel as soft and silky smooth as Parfait Chunky. It kind of has the same feel as Posh, but a little closer to Parfait, if that makes any sense. It behaves a little like Posh, with two exceptions. It will lose fluff on the end of the string. And it does not frog as well as Posh does. 
It's about the same as Frogging Parfait Chunky, but it definitely has more of that posh yarn feel. So I did, and I'm gonna go out of sequence here. I did have to test it out. I absolutely had to test it out. So I made one item using the peach, right? Number eight, yes. Using the peach and I made all from Jade's um, little octo with this. And it looks so cute. It worked up nice. The stitch definition, I mean, it's there just like with Posh. It was fairly easy to work with unless you had to frog. It does not frog as well as the Big Twist Posh does. I mean, it's still possible, but it doesn't hold up as well. So I did the Octo. Now, when we left off last time, I was telling you my market results, and I said that I wanted to have a few of these, but I had one that I was in the process of making, but I still needed five legs. So it was this one, and I think this is Coral in the Parfait Chunky, if I'm not mistaken. So here is, there is definitely a little bit of a size difference on the head, but I'm almost wondering, did I add an extra row because I got distracted on this one? Either way, they're both cute. It's just this one here with the toucan is a tiny bit bigger. So, but yeah, these were what were on my mind when I ordered that yarn, is wanting to have some nice pastel colors in these octopus. I also told you, I also told you that I had like dropped everything. I was working on a snake and I didn't finish it because I wanted to make those larger stingray. So I've got to finish my snake. And he is in Parfait Chunky. I did him in Toffee, Mustard, and Teddy Bear. Now I was probably had about this much done. And then I was regretting my color choices because of all the color changes. This snake took a lot longer <laughs> to make than the other ones, but he's finally done and he, he's ready for sale. So I don't think I'll do one with that frequent of a color change. You know, maybe have a few more rows in between before the color changes. But yeah, so my snake is done. So the octopus and the snake were, um, two incomplete items before my last market and they are now done. So then Jenna, bless her heart, <laughs> she comes up to me and she says, oh, on TikTok, this, this little critter is going crazy on TikTok and it's called a sad hamster. So she gives me the link to the pattern and I take a screenshot and print it out for myself because, you know, it's just easier. I can see it better. I'm, my eyes are old. <laughs> so I can see it better if I print it out. So I do the first round and I get to the second round. Now the first round you're ending with 12 because of the way it started off with a chain instead of with a circle. So you go from 12 and the next round says you should have 18. But these are the directions. Three single crochet, increase times six. So, no matter how you do this, if you do three single crochets and six increases, you have 15 stitches, but you're supposed to have 18. Or if you do three single crochets and an increase six different times, you are up to what, like 30? It just wasn't coming out. And then the the third round was off even more. So I just was like, Jenna, I'm sorry, but 
this thing is not going to work. The pattern is not right. It's not going to work. So the object was a sad hamster. So I went looking for a free pattern for a hamster that I could maybe make it look close to this sad hamster for her. <laughs> and I came across one. Hopefully I can find it again because it was a free one on a blog and I'm not sure I saved it. <laughs> but with some work, I could find it again. Anyhow, so this was, it's a, um, it's not a hamster, it's a baby guinea pig, I think. So this was, this is doing it the way the pattern said to do it. Now, I stitched on a nose, it didn't have that. And I thought I was using big enough eyes. But the sad hamster from TikTok has like ginormous eyes. Plus I did not care for how the back legs were done. So I tried it again and I thought, you know what? Let me try and be a little creative because I see hamsters as, you know, this rusty, light rusty, like brown color with a little white on their, their bellies and, you know, like multicolored. So I just tried, um, mm, I tried it with the mustard and some white. Well, the white didn't end up in the right spot, but that's okay. And I tried doing it with the bobbles in place of these back legs, you know, giving it bobbles for that. And it's funny how different the sizes are on these two because those are the only, well, I think I changed how I did the ears too. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so this was the second one with these like ginormous 16 millimeter eyes. If I wouldn't have messed up the colors, this would have been really, really close to the sad hamster that she wanted. Like, if I had done it in this color, and look at the size difference. It's just because this yarn, the mustard, had a lot more fluff on it than the teddy bear did. I used the same size hooks. Um, did my stitch the same way, the yarn under, over, and... This one's cuter, but I like the legs better. And I added a little tail because hamsters have a little nubby tail where this one didn't have a tail. So I don't know if I should revisit this again or not. I mean, if it's that big of a thing on TikTok, and I am not a TikTok user, but if it's that big of a thing on TikTok, a lot of the young people will know about it and sad hamsters might do well at a market. So I don't know. I'm sure Toby would love to get a hold of these. So after I did those, I spent a day and a half. Well, the giraffe took me, I started it like the evening after the market and I finished it up the next day, late the next day, because I still have to do my button orders and stuff and keep up with, you know, life. <laughs> but, uh, so I started the pattern test, like, in the evening. I had to, I had like this massive headache, so I had to lay down for a little while. So I got like a late night start, and I was up late because, I had a nap. <laughs> Here we go, getting that sleep schedule all messed up again. So I got part of it done that next evening. The next day I made, got my button orders out of the way and then I started working on it again. And I'm not gonna show you yet. I'm just explaining my time line here. Um, <laughs> so I knocked that out. I got it finished and then I'm like, I need to work on market prep. And at that point, it was like, ugh, I don't know, 1030. 
which is late for some, but it was early for me. So I still had like an hour and a half before I would go to bed. So I was like, I need to make some mini turtles because I sold most of them. I think I have one left. But I can't find my pattern notes. And I have to, or I had to go back and watch my own video and write it down because I could not find my pattern notes. And when you jump around from pattern to pattern like I do, it's kind of hard to remember like every step. Once you get going, it's like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that. But it's kind of hard to remember every step. So I watched my video and wrote down the directions and made one turtle. And by that time, I was spent. It's time for bed. So this little guy still needs his eyes. I did one little turtle. Now I used the sage glitz. You can see the sparkle in there. That and the little legs was how much I had left of that color from doing the pattern test. Well, I'll explain why when I get to that part. So I have one turtle, but I now have notes again so I can make some more. And uh, yeah. So you know how you, you got to mix things up. So I am on Instagram. I am scrolling through my feed and oh, I forget who showed this little tiny mini pig. And yes, I have a pig pattern. I have my own pig pattern making bacon, but these were little teeny tiny ones that you could put like a $5, maybe a $7 price sticker on. They didn't come out quite as big. So I took a look at the, the free pattern and I'm like, oh, okay, it's only 14 rounds. So let's see what we can do with that. Well, my first one didn't come out too hot. First problem I had with, was with the way the ears were done. So it was, do a half double crochet, chain three, do a half double crochet. And it left like holes a big gaping hole in each ear. And I'm like, that won't work. So I pulled it out and I did the chain three, but then I did it like a Pico and it made them a little pointy. So I'm not sure I like that too much. And then for a tail, it said to just chain three. And I'm like, you can't do that with this chenille yarn, it's going to shred. You won't have anything left of that tail. So when I got to the butt area, I did like chain four and then slip stitch back three to give it a tail. And that way, you know, it's going to last a little bit longer. But I wasn't happy with like really how this turned out. So I did a second one and I went down a hook size and it came out a little bit smaller. Like this was a five millimeter hook. This is a 4.5. And I actually like it tiny like this. And I did the ears the same way. And so they're a little pointy, but you can like curl them forward. But I think I might've used too small of eyes. I don't know, he's kind of cute. So I like him like this size. This is almost like, to me is almost like keychain size. So then I thought to myself, well, how much bigger would it be if I did it in Michaels, you know, the sweet snuggles. So I got out my pink of the Michaels and I did another one. So, and still doing the chain three Pico with, and he ends up with the pointy ears. But like I said, you can just kind of like roll it down. So that's not a bad size. That would be, you know, a five to seven dollar price tag. I mean, this is the size difference between Parfait and Michaels. So I made one more because I still wasn't happy with the ears. And I like this one a lot better, but by the time I finished with this one, I'm tired of making pigs. <laughs> so this one, on the ears, I think they look a lot cuter. What I did is the half double crochet, a double crochet, and a half double crochet. 
It's a little more rounded. They, these are just like really pointy. And personally, I like these a little better. Like if this was a cat, those might work good with the, the pointiness, but I like this one better. And I did the same thing with the, the tail to give it a little tail instead of doing a chain three. And this one, my nose shape turned out a whole lot better. So I was like really concentrating because like, I don't know if you can see it on here. This one looked a little crooked. Like, did I miss a stitch or something? Who knows? But I think this one turned out the best. But like I said, by this point, I was tired of making pigs. And then I'm like, well, as much as, you know, possums aren't a huge seller for me, I finally went through all the ones I had made. And the pattern I use is a free one off of Instagram. So I wanted to see how it would turn out in the Michael's yarn. You're like, how much bigger if it, you know, really made that much of a difference? Well, it does. He's a lot bigger. He is super fat. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I like him in the Michael Sharn. I kind of like him in the uh, Parfait Chunky, and he ends up about the size of this little pig in the Parfait Chunky. So, I don't know. He just, he looks to me like he is a fat little pig in a possum costume. <laughs> so I only made one. And I think I'm going to go back to using the Parfait Chunky because I just think they're, for as basic as they are, I think that they are way cuter in being small. Like, I think it needs more face. Like, Maybe the nose needs to come out more. I don't know. But yeah, so that one was in Michael's. Now, you guys have been waiting for this. This pattern test that I did, the pattern is not available yet. So I was debating on whether or not I should share it today, but I asked and she said it was okay. Um, this is like an amazing pattern. It's the first pattern that she has written and boy, did she pick a challenging one for her first pattern. Once she has um, the pattern available because the test is still going on, it, it's, it's a cool pattern. It is really cool. I will link her shop I'll get the information from her and I'll link her shop, her Etsy shop in the description. I know she was having problems because it's, but I've seen a lot of people are having problems with the file sizes if they use Google Docs to type up their pattern and it's making the files come out massive. Once her pattern is complete and she makes any corrections, you know, she has her feedback, her photos from the testers and makes any corrections that she might need to make then she'll have her pattern up for sale. But this thing is awesome. So, in the pattern, you get your choice of three different types of heads, three different types of horns, three sizes of wings, and then two different ways that you can do the spikes or just a stripe, but let me just show you. Okay, so like, this is my dragon. Look at the shape of the horns, and this is just one of the shapes. It had, one of the horns, it was like twisted, kind of like a unicorn, but I just absolutely loved the shape of these horns. Now, when you put them on, it's not gonna be symmetrical. So I just kind of maneuvered them around to where I thought they, they looked good. 
Now I, I did do my nostrils a little different. I just, you know, like embroidered them on, just kept going through to give them the little nostrils. In her pattern, she has you like crochet little ones and sew it on, but there is a lot of sewing in this pattern. It is not for the meek when it comes to sewing, but it's, it's an amazing pattern. She did a fantastic job. So I chose the medium size wings and I made it in parfait chunky. This is plum, it's a gorgeous shade of purple. And then sage in the glitz. You should be able to see all the sparkle. And then I opted to do the wings and the spikes in the same color as the sage because purples are not the easiest thing to match colors with. But I just love how this little beast turned out. So you can move the legs around. They've so you can position it. The tail is bendable. The little, um, what would you call that? Like a spade on the tail. It's amazing. She really did a good job. And when, the, oh, when it's ready, if you guys like dragons and you're not afraid of sewing, this is one, this is one you should do. It's like, Gorgeous. Now, and I chose head option number one. There's two other options. So, but it does use a lot of yarn. On your main color, you're going to use two and a half skeins. And I used every bit of what she said I would use. And because I chose to do all the other parts in one color, I used almost an entire skein of that. But the horns was like a pair of socks for me. I had to make three. My second one didn't look as good as my first one. And I'm not sure if it was my stuffing or my tension. I, I think it was the stuffing. So I made a third and whichever two came out looking alike were the ones I was gonna do. So my third one ended up looking like my first one, which thrilled me because I loved how the first one turned out. So that's what I went with. And then I made the amount of spikes that she said she used on hers. But because of the way I, the distance I spaced them apart, I did not need as many spikes. So I had a few spikes left over. So I guess the moral to that story was because I made the third horn and the extra spikes, I didn't have as much of the sage color left as I should have but I'm picky. I wanted them to look the same. But like I said, she did a fantastic job with this pattern. I can't wait to see what everybody else's looks like. But yeah, so I did option one on the head, option one on the horns. I did the medium size wings because there's three sizes of that. And then you get your choice of like slanted spikes or the regular spikes. I did the regular and yeah, it is so stinking cute. And it is pretty big. At first when I saw how much yarn it said I was gonna eat, I thought this thing's gonna be ginormous. So it's not as big as I thought it was gonna be, but it is big. And it's so pretty. So Shannon is the designer of this dragon pattern. Her Instagram is Snuggle Beans Crochet, which will also be her Etsy shop name. She's not open yet. She's getting in the process of setting it up. But I'm going to share the link to her Etsy. And if you go over there, just like favor it because I'm a little early. I believe her pattern is going to release somewhere around the 13th. But this guy is, this thing is just amazing.
it's just amazing. So, yeah, if you go over there, if you're interested in her pattern, go over there, um, save it. That way you get a notification when she gets the listing up. But again, you can also follow her on Instagram and get updates about the pattern. Snuggle Beans Crochet. So that is what I have been up to this week. And I need to get to work. I have some button orders to process and I need to make some more turtles now that I wrote down my pattern. <laughs> I can't believe, I am so bad at that. I just, I tend to write them down on a scrap paper like this and then it gets mixed in with everything else and then I end up throwing it away, I guess. So, but I have it again. Thank goodness for videos. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go make my button orders. I am going to then work on some smalls, probably turtles, I'm not sure. And we're gonna go from there. All right, you guys, don't be afraid to try out the Toucan yarn. Um, if you liked Posh, I think you'll like this, but wait for it to go on sale. Might be a while, but wait for it to go on sale. There is, and when this dragon pattern's ready, you guys need to check it out. Okay, you guys, I am going to put all this stuff away and I'm gonna go get started on my button orders and uh, I'll see you over here or here in the next video.